Let's take a look at the different compartments or parts of the blood pressure cuff first. So it is very important that you actually have the correct size blood pressure cuff for your patient because if the blood pressure cuff is too big for the patient, the blood pressure reading may be too low. If the blood pressure cuff is too small, the patient's blood pressure reading will be too high and neither of those will give us an accurate reading of what the patient's blood pressure actually is. Now, if we take a look at this blood pressure cuff, it'll tell us over here that it's an adult regular size. And then over here, it also has the range in centimeters, which in this particular case is 25.4 to 40.6 centimeters. And then in order to make sure that we have the correct size of the cuff for our patient, we look on the inside of it and see that there is the velcro part and then right underneath here is the actual bladder which is the part that gets inflated around the patient's arm and the length of the bladder is supposed to be 40 percent approximately 40 percent of the patient's upper arm circumference so what we will do is we will put the blood pressure cuff on the patient and make sure that it covers less than half of the patient's arm circumference in order to be the right size now looking at the two other compartments or parts, we have our bulb here, the one that actually inflates the blood pressure cuff. So there is the dial and then here's the bulb that we will actually squeeze to inflate the cuff. Now this dial, if you are right handed, I would recommend holding it in your right hand and then having the control of the dial with your um, index finger and thumb and then dial it up all the way until it comes to the stopping point. Once it comes to the stopping point that means that now it's ready to be inflated and you can um, squeeze the ball to inflate the cuff and then gently move it with the index finger and thumb to deflate the blood pressure cuff. And you really want to do this very slowly because if the dial releases too fast, you won't be able to see the actual reading. Now, if you are left-handed, it helps to turn this bulb the other way and actually hold it with your left hand. Now, in this case, you will need to turn it towards you to lock it. And then again, you hold it with the index finger and the thumb. And in this case, you will move it away from you to deflate, but see it's very small movements here to make sure that the needle actually deflates at a rate that we can see easily see the patient's blood pressure. The other part of the blood pressure cuff is the actual sphygmomanometer, so the actual device that will give us the reading. As you can see here, it goes from zero all the way to 300. It is very important that we assess the patient and ask them what their normal blood pressure is and then inflate the blood pressure cuff to approximately 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury above their normal blood pressure. So for example, if the normal blood pressure is 110 over 70, we would inflate the cuff to approximately 130 to 140 and then slowly dial it so that you can easily see their normal blood pressure. There is no reason to inflate the blood pressure cuff to higher than that because it exerts a lot of pressure on the patient's arm and actually causes some discomfort. Now take a look at the dials in between. So for example, from 60 to 80, there is a bigger line that says seven, that would be 70. And then in between we have smaller lines and in increments of two. So that would be 60, 62, 64, 66, 68, and 70. So it is really difficult on a manual blood pressure cuff to get odd numbers because you really need Spider-Man vision to be able to see those in-between lines. So make, be aware of that and um, make sure that you get your accurate readings mostly with even numbers here. And then one more part we need to discuss is this little loop here. So this is actually uh, a nifty little device because you can hook the sphygmomanometer either from the bottom with the hook in here and hold it in place. Or if you prefer, there are these two little prongs back there. You can actually hook it 
this way and it'll sit right here. Now both of them are a little flimsy and remember it's going to be sitting on the patient's or, um, left or right brachial artery so it might be more on the inside of their upper arm so it might be a little bit difficult. So sometimes what I do is I just unhook it and ask my patient to actually hold it to where I can easily see it.